I wanted in writing the book to get away from the idea that the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was merely an episode in Polish history, that it was something imposed by Poles on the peoples of the Commonwealth. And the message of the book is really that all the peoples of the Commonwealth contributed to the formation of that political union, a very unique political formation in the period. And I felt that it was important to use the work of Ukrainian historians, Belarusian historians, Lithuanian historians, as well as Polish historians. And the four historians to whom I dedicated the book, um, Oskar Halecki, Adolfus Szapoka, uh, Lubavsky, who's Russian, but he was born in Belarus, what is now Belarus, and Trushevsky were four historians whose work I used and who are in many respects great historians. Um, and their careers reflected the problems of writing history of this part of the world. Um, in one way or another, they all suffered for their history. Um, Lubavsky suffered after the, the Russian Revolution. Um, Khrushchevsky was arrested, he, his work was banned. Uh, Shapoka and Halecki went into exile. Um, Khrushchevsky, of course, loathed the Union and thought it was a very bad um, period in Ukrainian history. But precisely because of that, I was interested in his views. He is a truly great historian. And he's also, he was also a politician intimately involved with the creation or the attempt to create an independent Ukraine. And that, I thought, lent his historical work even more interest. He was a historian, he was a politician. The fact that he criticized the formation of the Commonwealth in such an interesting way and based on his unparalleled knowledge of the sources meant that although I disagreed with a great deal of what he said, you cannot ignore Ruszewski's opinions on just about anything. And it was a fascinating experience to read him and to think about what he said. So, yeah, that's the reason that, that I selected him. We shouldn't just read historians that we agree with. Um, we need to read historians that we disagree with. There are many things on which I actually do agree with Fruszewski, but that's another matter. I've been involved in projects, but most of my projects have been as an individual author. I have written books, which means that I'm in command, I'm in control, and I write. This was something of a new experience for me, and it was a very positive experience, I must say. I, I, I've not just contributed to the editing of one of the volumes in the series, I've also reviewed several of the volumes in the series in various publications. So I, I feel that I do know quite a bit about the whole project. I've not reviewed all the volumes, but I've reviewed at least five of them, I think I've lost count. But the standard of scholarship that Frank Sisson has brought as to the project as, as sort of the chief editor has been tremendous. And I think I'd not come across this model of producing volumes in which there are in effect three introductions. Um, two scholars provide introductions for each volume, um, looking at different aspects of that volume and of the stages of Fruszewski's life. And when Frank invited me to write the int introduction to volume four, it was an exciting project because it forced me to find out more about the conditions under which Fruszewski wrote the volume, which was a very interesting period in Ukrainian history and in his own um, life after he'd moved to Lviv from Kiev and when he was doing battle with the Polish historical establishment there. And it made me look at the 
book, which I read previously in Ukrainian and knew already, but it made me look at it in a, a rather new light and made me appreciate many of the subtleties of Khrushchevsky's scholarship. So it was a tremendously positive experience. I had a, a long email correspondence about various drafts of what I was writing with Frank and with Yaroslav Hritsak, who read my draft to, and both of them made very important points about my approach to the volume, which was a very interesting experience. And um, there was a real sense of it, this being a collective work. I also um, advised on some of the Latin and German translations in the work. And the attention to detail was incredible. We had long debates about how you translate certain Ukrainian words into English and the problems of so doing, because there are major problems in, in translating offices where there's no real English equivalent, because you can give the wrong impression of what the office is about if you choose the wrong English word. Translation is a very very difficult art and the quality of the translations into English I, I rate extremely highly. They read well and there has been a tremendous uh, amount of thought that has gone into these matters. It's, it's rather like watching, you know, if you read it, it's rather like watching a duck swim serenely across the pond and you don't see the legs pounding below the surface. Well, there was a lot of legs pounding below the surface to produce this translation. It is a major contribution, a very important contribution. In the first review I wrote of the, the, the first um, volumes that I reviewed, I, I said, well, you know, what's the point of translating into English a scholar who wrote at the end of the 19th and in the early 20th century? There are many historians of Britain of France, of Germany from that period, that you would think now their views are dated, that what's the value in translating them except for people who might be narrowly interested only in historiography and want to write about how historians in the age of positivism wrote history. But Khrushchevsky is different, partly, as I said, because he was a politician who was intimately involved in the creation and justification of the existence of a modern Ukrainian nation and therefore his history bears eloquent testimony to his efforts as a politician. He needed to write that history to prove that the Ukrainians were a modern nation. Um, uh, in the introduction I wrote to volume four I drew on a passage in Khrushchevsky's diary where he is greatly disturbed by reading Hegel. And Hegel, of course, was someone who made this distinction between the historic and the non-historic nations. And I think he doesn't say so explicitly, but I think that's what troubles Khrushchevsky. And that was when he was a student in Kyiv. And he clearly set out to demonstrate and prove that Ukrainians are a historic nation and therefore deserve to be considered as a proper nation. And therefore, that is one reason why it is important to look at his work and it's important to teach his work. And, you know, it existed in Ukrainian, but students, unless they're of Ukrainian heritage, don't you read Ukrainians, Ukrainian. And much of the history of Eastern Europe that is written in English has been written by historians who are experts on Russia or Germany and reflect that many, by no means all, and there are noble exceptions, but many historians of, Russian, of Russia in the West don't read Ukrainian. Many Russian historians of Eastern Europe don't bother by, to read Ukrainian literature. And you cannot get a full picture of the history of that part of the world unless you read 
Ukrainian history, Ukrainian historians alongside Russian historians and Polish historians. Look at Trushevsky as a historian, as a historian who is writing a history of Ukraine across the period. And the great thing about the volumes is that it goes from the very origins of Ukraine to where you, Trushevsky had to stop suddenly. It's a pity he never managed to write the volumes for the 18th century that he intended to write. But his life was too short and the Soviet authorities wouldn't allow him. I would like in turn to thank the, the Yatsik Foundation for funding this project. There are very few foundations that would put up money and it required a great deal of money to make the project as professional as it was. And so we are all deeply in the debt of the foundation for having made possible this translation, which will change a great deal. I've already had students working on various aspects of it. So thank you very much.